Hernando de Soto was a conquistador, a conqueror. By the time de Soto came to Georgia in 1540, he was already a wealthy man. He had gotten rich fighting in South America and taking part in the conquest of the Incan Empire. But he came to the southeastern United States looking for even more riches. Two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Exploration and discovery. Today it means a voyage to the planets, a journey to the moon and the stars. We explore because there is in all of us a need to know more, a curiosity about the universe and how it was made and where we came from. But 500 years ago, exploration meant crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Discovery meant finding gold. And that's what Hernando de Soto was looking for when he came to the southeastern United States to a place he called La Florida. They had had reports of gold being in Florida uh, in the hands of native people. What they didn't realize is that that gold had come off Spanish ships that had wrecked on the coast of Florida and had been salvaged by the Native Americans. Uh, so yes, some of the Native Americans had gold, but it wasn't mined here. Inevitably, DeSoto's search for gold led to war. <laughs> But he only had 600 men, and he faced thousands of Native Americans. How could he win against such terrible odds? With them, they brought their weapons, which were the state-of-the-art weapons of the 16th century. Uh, I think the two most devastating weapons were first the war dogs, the attack dogs that were trained to attack people, and also the war horses. Uh, there were knights who came with their servants and their armor and their weapons, and those armored knights would be mounted on horses that were also armored in some fashion. And essentially, it was the Sherman tank of the day. Uh, a Native American with a club or a spear or a bow and arrow was not necessarily a, a very good opponent for one of these tank-like uh, mounted knights. Today, dogs are our pets, and we like little dogs. Back then, dogs were also pets, but then they were used for hunting and for attack purposes. Large mastiff-like dogs were trained to attack Native Americans and could tear them limb to limb. Uh, sure, they were cruel, and when the other Indians <clears throat> saw them do this, uh, most likely they then would bend to the will of the Spanish. <laughs> The Native Americans tried repeatedly to uh, defeat uh, the Spanish, but first, most of the Native American weapons, you really need to get pretty close. And because of the war dogs, the, the horses, uh, they just weren't successful. How do we know what happened to DeSoto's expedition 450 years ago? At least three of the people who traveled with him kept journals. These journals, or chronicles, describe a terrible battle near Mabila in Alabama where DeSoto was ambushed. They counted up and, and the chronicles report that thousands of Native Americans were killed. Uh, must have been an incredible, horrendous battle. Uh, the Spaniards lost a lot of their supplies and equipment at that, uh, but they were, they were able to get out of this ambush and to survive. In the end, his expedition was a failure. DeSoto never found any gold. His legacy was one of disease and cruelty and death. But at least there is this. The journals of his expedition kept alive the names and stories of the native people he encountered. When Hernando DeSoto went through the Oconee River Valley, which is where we're excavating, he encountered a chiefdom, or something like a kingdom in medieval Europe, um, that was known as Okute, and that was the name of the people that lived at Raccoon Ridge. Now, the people at Raccoon Ridge probably paid their tribute, their allegiance, to a local chief known as Kofaki. And we have those names because DeSoto actually went there. But in many instances, the only reason we know that some of those Native American groups existed, that many of those Native American groups existed, is because information about them is recorded in the accounts of the DeSoto expedition. 
Uh, I think that's his most important legacy, what he tells us about the past, although he helped to destroy that past. There are still lots of places I'd like you to see in this state, and there are still lots of people I'd like you to meet. This is Georgia Stories. I'm Colin Cedor. Thanks. <laughs>